Bill the Flavor Guy here. Today, we're gonna answer some questions that you guys have sent in to us. These are all great questions, I love it. Um, in the future, if you'd like me to address you by your first name, don't hesitate to put that in there. No last names, please, because we wouldn't want to you know, identify you per se by your last name, but first name's great. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and every now and then we have some special uh, giveaways those people that uh, reach out to us so you know stay tuned so I'm gonna start with the one about the kombucha the question is when flavoring my kombucha my home brew kombucha which flavoring from nature's flavors do you recommend extracts syrups organic non-organic what amount of flavor should uh, I start with in a five gallon batch okay so first off the really cool thing about kombuchas is they have natural acids, lactic acid and acetic acid. And if you're adding any citrus to it, then of course it would have some citric acid in it as well. That doesn't hurt. Um, those kinds of acids, the lactic and the acetic that are naturally a part of kombuchas, combined with a little bit of citric acid make for this like hybrid where any of any flavor that coming from the fruit you might be adding and uh, the flavor that you're going to add is gonna just explode. It's gonna bloom like a flower. And so I really like that. I like um, things when you're flavoring them, having acid already there where you don't have to necessarily add acid. Um, and so uh, we've done a lot of kombuchas over the last 30 years, back when they were not so vogue, um, but they were vogue and now they're kind of more back to the home brew style, which is great, grassroots kind of uh, style. Um, I, I like flavor concentrates for kombuchas. Flavor extracts will work, but they're so flavor extracts are so clean that some of those waxy, uh, heavy notes that are not prevalent in the extracts are they're missing. They're in the concentrates. And so that's why I kind of like a concentrate more for a kombucha because it's going to have uh, some of the deeper body uh, flavor components, like the citruses, for instance. When you make an extract for citrus, you take away all the heavy terpene flavors. So we call them waxes, but they do contribute to flavor. They give that kind of a, a little bit of a bitterness to it. Um, and, the, and they have this really bassy note. They're heavy, um, so they don't blow off right away like the top notes. When you have an extract, you have a lot of top notes. You have mid-range notes and you have top notes. I know this all sounds like music, and that's because it is. Flavors are no different than music. There's a bass, there's a treble, and everything in between. And you want a kind of a nice array of all those notes when you're making a kombucha. Some things, you know, like in ice creams, you want just mid-range and those top notes. But in kombuchas, you want the whole range if you can help it. So a concentrate is probably your best bet. And um, I work in percentages. Um, that's how I learned as a kid is, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I play around in my kitchen at home and, you know, my outside lab in my garden and I'll throw a little bit of this in there, but I've been doing it for so long. I know what approximately a little bit of this and a little bit of that is. When I say I throw some pixie dust in there, I know I'm probably throwing in 0.04%. I, I just know that by experience. Um, so when I flavor kombuchas, I start out at about 0.1%. Now, um, 0.1% would be in a hundred grams or a hundred mLs, which is around three ounces. And also 0.1% of a liquid in three ounces would be about five drops. So if you can remember all this crazy talk, five drops is about 0.1% in a three ounce glass of kombucha. And then from there, if you taste it, and you feel it needs a little bit more flavor, add a little bit more flavor to it. What you don't want to get to with any flavoring, that's my, that's the flavor guy rule. I, I coined this thing when I was a kid, is you don't want to be any different than nature because in nature, nothing lasts for more than three to five seconds. Now there's some rarities to that. There, there's some instances like lemon juice, I mean, or passion fruit that can last for a long time because that's how nature made it. But for the most part, like if you're eating a peach or a cherry or a banana or a raspberry, a piece of steak, you eat it, you taste it, and in three to five seconds, it goes away and you take another bite, another scoop, another spoonful. And you keep doing that. And the only thing that stops you is your stomach gets full. When you over flavor something, you stop eating it because the flavor lasts for 15 seconds, minutes. You're burping it 45 minutes later and you're sick of it. 
So when you flavor your kombucha or anything, don't over flavor it. Just enough, I drink it, I taste raspberry kombucha or peach kombucha or ginger, and then I, I want more, I want another drink. That's the sign of a good product. It, it shouldn't satisfy you. Nothing in nature satisfies you. That's what keeps you coming back for more. And so when you're making your drinks, whether it's for a commercial application or for just yourself, make it so you want another drink. All you need to know is that I, I put peach flavor in it. Does it taste like peach? Is the acid pushing the flavor? Is there a little bit of sweetness driving it? Those all all things that you find in nature on a peach, right? And um, so that should, should take care of that. All right, hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, I love this kind of stuff. Okay next question I uh, love it it's a favorite and it's um, it's about making homemade extracts using regular flavors can they be made strong enough to be stronger than an artificial and the answer is in today's technology and even the stuff you have at home in the kitchen the answer is yes you can I often do um, making flavors from fruits is probably the best way to make a flavor but you have to be able to concentrate it and you got to do it without um, cooking it too much because heat kills flavor. Kitchens smell great because flavor is being cooked and it's volatile and it wants to get up into the air. And what you're smelling is no longer going to be inside the product in the pan uh, or in the jar because it's in the air now and that's your flavor leaving. So it smells good but it's that, that amount of flavor that's in the air is no longer in the fruit or whatever it was you were cooking. So heating is your worst enemy. Now, I could probably spend an hour talking about how to make natural flavor extracts from fruit, but I'm gonna, I'll just spend a little bit of time on a couple and maybe at a future um, video, I'll actually make some stuff for you guys so that you can see and that those basic uh, ways that I make it would apply to a whole variety of fruits and uh, vegetables. And I'll tell you about that as well at that time. But let's just talk about, for instance, like an apple. So. If you take apple juice and you're, you were able to evaporate it, concentrate it, one of the things you can do is if, if you uh, put it under low heat uh, for a little bit in a, um, you know, kind of a, not, not covered, but allowing some of the water to evaporate, but not open pan all the way, um, do that for like maybe uh, 20 or 30 minutes, then take that, cool it down, and then put it back into the freezer and what happens is everything that's the water-based part of it is going to freeze, but the very top when it's completely frozen is going to be a little bit of syrup. And that part at the top that's the syrup uh, is a concentration of sugar and apple flavor. And you can actually scrape that off. Now, if you knew how to ferment apple, uh, apple juice or apples that's another way of getting flavor from apples is you allow it to go through a fermentation where you're making a cider and then you take that cider and you do the same thing you freeze it and at the very top what will float up to the very top of that ice block is alcohol sugar and apple flavor and that's a great one you can scrape that off and you collect it and that is a truly powerful apple flavor extract there are freeze dryers that are for home use. Now they're not very cheap. I'm not gonna recommend, I, I don't have anything bad to say about any of the freeze dryers that are out there. In fact, I own a few of them and they're fantastic. Um, freeze drying fruit will evaporate the water, but not the flavor. Let's say you had a quarter of a pound of cherries, for instance, you see you froze, uh, freeze dried them. And so you've completely removed all the water, but inside the cherry is the flavor still. It didn't leave because freeze dryers work on really low temperatures and vacuum. And they suck out all the water, but the flavor stayed in the fruit. And take that dried fruit, chop it all up, put it in a little, you know, let's say like a quarter pound, and I would put in like maybe another quarter pound of vodka, like 80 proof vodka. And I would let it sit in a closed jar for a couple of days, then take out the liquid, what's easy to get out and then press out the rest. It will wring it out. And that would be a concentrated cherry extract. Now you could do that, what I just said, with almost every fruit you can imagine. Peaches, except for fruits that are high in uh, sugar. Bananas probably wouldn't work unless uh, you, um, well, it just wouldn't work. The, the better thing with bananas is kind of the apple trick where you actually mash the bananas 
and get them you know sort of in a, a liquid state and then freeze them and again some of that sugar that floats at the top is going to be really concentrated banana syrup or banana flavor so any questions you might have uh, put it in the comments down below and if we pick your question we'll feature it in our next video don't forget if you would like your first name mentioned so you know i'm talking to you um, i love knowing who i'm talking to i won't mention your last name um, you know send me some tough ones i love hard questions and there are no question is a bad question, no question is stupid. I've, I've seen and done it all in my 40 years of making flavors. So uh, yeah, I love the tough ones though, all right?